Good day, beloved of Christ. Welcome to prayer for Monday, the 9th of May. Let's take a deep breath as we begin and then share together our introductory responses for the resurrection season, Eastertide. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Together, the Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He gave us new life and hope by raising Jesus from the dead. Together, he gave us new life and hope by raising Jesus from the dead. Rejoice then, even in your distress. We shall be counted worthy when Christ appears. Together, we shall be counted worthy when Christ appears. God has claimed us as his own. He called us from our darkness into the light of his day. He called us from our darkness into the light of his day. Alleluia, Christ is risen together. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. The Lord is our light and our life. O come, let us worship. Psalm 41 is a wide-ranging psalm which tells us about the happiness of those who consider the needs of the destitute, tells us of God's preservation and God's promises, tells also of the sore affliction of betrayal by friends and those who speak behind our back, and then tells us also of the gift of integrity by which God holds us fast and holds us together. Psalm 41. Happy are they who consider the poor and needy. The Lord will deliver them in the time of trouble. The Lord preserves them and keeps them alive so that they may be happy in the land. The Lord does not hand them over to the will of their enemies. The Lord sustains them on their sickbed and ministers to them in their illness. I said, Lord, be merciful to me. Heal me, for I have sinned against you. My enemies are saying wicked things about me, asking when will I die and my name perish. Even if they come to see me, they speak empty words. Their heart collects false rumors. They go outside and spread them. All my enemies whisper together about me and devise evil against me. They say that a deadly thing has fastened on me, that I have taken to my bed and will never get up again. Even my best friend, whom I trusted, who broke bread with me, has lifted up the heel and turned against me. But you, O Lord, be merciful to me and raise me up, and I shall repay them. By this I know you are pleased with me, that my enemy does not triumph over me. In my integrity you hold me fast, and shall set me before your face for ever. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel from age to age. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Remember us, gracious God, when we are lonely and depressed, and support us in the dark night of grief and despair. For your love is faithful, and you do not forget your broken ones. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Together, glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We return to our Colossians reading after taking a break to celebrate St. John the Evangelist on Friday. We pick up Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 to 17. Very detailed instruction, rules for holy living, what Christians should do. I ask that you would attend, as always, with the ears of your heart. Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died, and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these the wrath of God is coming. You used to walk in these ways in the life you once lived, but now, You must rid yourselves of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge 
in the image of its Creator. Here there is no Greek or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is in all. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other, and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive, as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, and as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My, oh my, folks, such a pregnant reading for us today, full of direct and practical instruction, and full also of the participatory mysticism of St. Paul. So by that I mean the deeply prayerful life of St. Paul, which causes him to identify fully with Christ. We too are invited into such a participation in the life of Christ. Hear this through the reading. We have been raised with Christ. We have died. Now our life is hidden with Christ in God. Christ is our life. Christ is all and in all. Christ is highly exalted and yet so near to us, nearer to ourselves than our own nearest self. By faith, we participate in Christ's life. But this is in no way airy-fairy without root in the real world. It calls us to exchange, to put off our old self, which is the way of spiritual death and separation from God, and to put on the new self, which is born anew in Christ. And this new self is called to particular kinds of action, particular dispositions, a particular way of being in the world, a way of being which is not at all characterized by immorality, impurity, lust, evil desire, greed, anger, rage, malice, slander, filthy language, or lying. One living the new life in Christ no longer makes distinctions according to religion, social status, or ethnic background. For Christ is all and is in all. And since we are God's chosen people, we are deeply loved and are called to clothe ourselves with compassion. This means to put it on. That's an act of the will. To clothe ourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, giving each other the benefit of the doubt in bearing with one another in the spirit of patience, compassion, and forgiveness. And above all, to have all of these virtues tied up in love, which binds us up in perfect unity. And so I conclude with Paul's concluding two verses today. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, with all wisdom, as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, whether in word or in deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Amen. Amen. Let us respond to this charge with the hero Israel. Together, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and the great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Now as we turn to intercession, 
As we rest in God's presence and God's peace together, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the whole people of God, that each one may be a true and faithful servant of Christ, let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. For those drawing near to the light of faith, that the Lord will bring them to true knowledge of God's self. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy for our families and friends, that the Lord will give them joy and satisfaction in all that they do. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who are lonely, sick, hungry, persecuted, or ignored, that the Lord would comfort and sustain them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our country, that the Lord will help us to contribute to its true growth and well-being. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the whole human family, that we may live together in justice and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Gathering our prayers as Jesus taught us, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Beloved, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. And now may the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do God's will, working in you that which is pleasing in God's sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory for ever and ever. Amen. Have a blessed day today.